A friend who is new to motorcycle touring recently asked me what's the furthest I've gone in a day. In this video I'm going to tell you about five times I've gone too far and the mistakes that led up to those long days, along with ways to avoid those mistakes. Stick around to the end and I'll share how I plan my touring days now to allow both flexibility and to ensure that I have a nice end to my day. <laughs> My name is Peter and I've been riding motorcycles for over 50 years. Every summer I like to take at least one long trip and this year I have two in the planning stages. I also post videos about dual sport riding and camping. Hit the subscribe button if you want to learn more about motorcycle touring and follow me on my tours. T.S. Eliot once wrote, only those who risk going too far know how far one can go. In my opinion, only those who have gone too far know where they should have stopped. I've gone too far lots of times and sometimes for good reason, but I want to share some of my mistakes and how you can avoid them. Mistake number one, commitments. In 2019, I planned a tour of the Western United States on my then bike, a Honda NC750. It was an ambitious tour and I wanted to visit Yellowstone National Park, my son in Boulder, Colorado, the Grand Canyon, and my sister in San Francisco. I had 13 days to cover just over 7,000 kilometers, that's 5,600 miles, but that included two rest days for visiting. So the average was going to be about 636 kilometers a day or almost 400 miles. That's not an unreasonable distance, but today I plan for not more than 500 kilometers. However, averages can be deceiving. One of the goals of motorcycle touring is to get off the beaten path. On my first day, I took a scenic route that avoided the freeway out of Vancouver. Consequently, I fell short of my goal, which was a campsite I had planned in advance. I rode until dark and ended up in a motel, still 100 kilometers short of my goal. Because I had a reservation at a campsite near Yellowstone the next night, I had to make up that distance. The whole trip went like that. I would have a nice day followed by a very long day, trying to make up for the lost time. I shifted my day to visit my sister, but that gave me less time to get home. On my final day, I needed to get back to Canada because my travel insurance was expiring. So I ended up riding from Crescent City, California to Vancouver, over 1,000 kilometers. The fix? More flexibility between commitment. On my last trip to Colorado, I still wanted to visit my son and grandchildren, but I didn't reserve any campsites on the way. On this 16-day trip, my only commitment was in Boulder. I was able to be flexible on the days before and after, so I wasn't riding so far. My longest day was 800 kilometer, which was the only day I came close to riding until dark, and that was because I made mistake number four, which is still to come. Mistake number two, not knowing your option. In 2022, I wanted to take my Africa twin through the bush in British Columbia. I had planned my routes using the Gaia mapping app, and I set out with confidence with all my campsites located in advance. However, I had not seen the campsite, and they don't always turn out as described. When I arrived at the forestry site I had chosen, I found that it was really only one campsite, and it was really just a pullout off the logging road which still had a fair amount of traffic. Access to the river was by a steep trail. I clambered down and had a swim but I didn't think the site would be good for the night. Being out of cell phone range I couldn't see what the alternatives were so I decided to ride to the next town. What I discovered was that there was only one other forestry site option and it was quite a ways off the highway. I ended up camping on a disused logging road without any water source. I was able to have dinner and brush my teeth but I had to ride a hundred kilometers in the morning before I could get water and coffee. The fix, if I had anticipated going further than that site, I would have checked the map for alternative site. The one other option could have been doable if I'd gone directly there, but riding to find a cell phone signal exhausted me, and I barely got set up for the night before the sun set. Mistake number three, rigidly sticking to plan. In 2021, I rode to the Yukon along the Alaska Highway in British Columbia. I came home along the Cassiar Highway, making a big loop through northern British Columbia. On my second day, I had planned to stay at a recreation site off the highway. On the way, I passed a provincial park, but I was committed to getting to the recreation site. Unfortunately, when I arrived at the recreation site, it was closed. The site was dangerous due to pine beetles, as dead trees were in danger of falling on campsite. I ended up doubling back and going to the provincial park, which added about an hour to an already long day. The fix? Well, when I'm tired and a campsite presents itself that won't cause problems for my trip tomorrow, I'll take it. Mistake number four, underestimating your time. Remember my 29 19 trip that ended in a 1,000 kilometer day to get home? I made a lot of mistakes on that trip that I've avoided since. The reason I was still in California on my last day is that I wanted to take a scenic route out of San Francisco. 
I wanted to ride up the ocean along Highway 1, and I found what looked like a shortcut to get over to it. But the shortcut turned out to be 20 kilometers through a local park, with a 35 mile an hour speed limit. And with wet, mossy roads, I wasn't going to exceed it much. Then, when I got to Highway 1, I was 50 kilometers behind where I would have been if I'd taken the more direct route. To make it worse, even though I had been in 30 degree or 85 Fahrenheit weather, on the coast it was cool and foggy. After freezing for a couple of hours, I had to change my route and head inland to the sunshine, adding even more time to my day. The fix? Not all roads are equal. We love scenic winding roads on motorcycles, but you're going slower and you might have to stop to warm up at a coffee shop. You need to allow for the extra time. Mistake number five, lack of common sense. In 2023, on my Colorado trip, I had a nice short day planned of only about 300 kilometers, ending near Lincoln, Montana. I had scouted my map for possible campsite, but the one I chose had only six campsites. I liked it because it was on a lake, but the weather was blazing hot and a lot of other people wanted to be on the lake as well. So when I arrived, every site was full. And I don't think most people were planning to camp. They were just local people there for the day to picnic and swim. I could have hung around to see if anyone left, but I soldiered on, finally arriving an hour later at a campsite with no swimming that was half empty. When you travel without a reservation, it's best to plan to stay at places that are in less demand. This usually means a little more remote or with fewer amenity. I don't know if there is a fix for the lack of common sense. I've suffered from it my whole life. Just ask my mom. How I plan my trips now? This worked well for me on my Colorado trip, except for that one time. I usually camp for the night, so I like to have a quiet site to set up my tent with a little privacy. Commercial campsites always have better amenities, like flush toilets and showers, but I prefer more wild places. In the U.S., the Forest Service maintains campgrounds in national forests. These are quite inexpensive and usually well-maintained. However, many do not have water available. I always make sure I'm carrying enough water to get me through the night, or I do now. You can find Forest Service campsites through the U.S. Forest Service website. Links are shown in the show notes. Motorcycle touring is one of the best ways to see the world. You have a more direct experience feeling the air and smelling the scent. When you stop, people want to talk to you. But without the right kind of planning and flexibility, you can end up riding in the dark, desperately hanging on to get to a place for the night. If you found this video helpful, why not subscribe for more tips on successful motorcycle touring and to see my future travel.